This is Kevin. Let's get started with Dart in the Shell, Episode 4. If you remember from last time, we had our What's Up app, and that was responding to some arguments so that we could type What's Up, and it was uh, printing What's Up World, and we could do What's Up and add a yell command and add in a greeting to say something else, and then we could put in someone's name. My favorite example, of course, is my wife. A couple of things I glossed over that I want to cover about the args library is, one, we actually did some work to define shortcuts, so, or abbreviations, so you can cut these down to just be single letters, Y and G, and you get the same behavior. And something else I didn't point out in the app, we'll oh, go back to the Dart editor and open things up, was we did all this work in our args to populate help text, but we don't actually show that help text anywhere. I wanted to outline a way we can get at that and actually look at the one other feature that exists in arg parser. So let's come in here and do an add command. We'll call that help. Now that we have the help command, we can actually go into our results and see if a command has been set in those results and if that command's name is help. So what do we want to do here? Well, we'd, it'd be nice to actually print out some helpful information for someone that wants to use this. I keep forgetting my uh, quotes. So the parser actually has a method called getUsage that returns really helpful usage, usage information about the arguments you defined, the flags and the, the uh, options you've defined. And since we want the app to end at this point, we'll just return. So if we go back to what's up, you'll notice it works fine and we can yell. But if we add in a help, instead of getting that output, we get a nice set of usage information about that. So get usage is a really nice way to parse out some information about how to use this app. Now that we have our app showing us some help information and has a couple parameters, I want to take a little bit of a side jaunt, I guess, and talk about another topic that comes up a lot when you're programming in shell apps, and that's this topic of logging. I know when I'm running shell apps or anything that runs in the console, and actually even for the web for that matter, my go-to is usually just printing out information. I'll just do a print for any kind of debug information or to let, um, to let myself know what's going on. Of course, the problem with printing is then we need to go through the app once we're ready to ship and delete all those prints out. It'd be nice if we had a solution so that we could record information about how our app is performing that by default doesn't really change behavior of anything, but if we turn on something, we can grab that later. And of course, there's a great library um, that's similar to the arg parser library. It's provided by the Dart team, um, but you have to grab it from pub. You have to grab it from pub, and that's called logging. So if we open up, again, our pubspec file, let's add logging in here. And we'll save it, and you'll notice that things are downloaded and pulled in right away. And if we go in, we'll see logging has been added to our project. The simplest way to log is to actually create a top-level private field that stores a logger, and we'll give it a name that maps to this project so that if we're looking at logs from other things in the system, it's easy to filter out where those logs come from. And now we can just call log. Now log, logger comes with a number of methods. We can actually look at those here. You'll see that at the lowest level you can do config, and then there's a number of higher levels. And actually if you go to the levels class, you can see what the values are for these. The default is actually info at 800, so we'll just log it, everything in info. So let's log when help is called. Let's log when we have no names provided. And how about we log when the app starts? 
And I guess when we do that, let's do one at the end. Now one thing you'll notice, that's not, while it's nice to use log and not print directly, we still need to get the information out of log somehow. So if you actually look at the API for log, you'll see that there is a event, a logger events um, property, the name is on, and I'm sure this will get uh, changed to the stream event pattern that's coming along. And we can wire that up and I guess print something out. But a common thing that I'd like to do is actually print out a log that maps to the process that's being run so that I can inspect and see what's happening in the app outside of the running app. So the app can go along and print things out or do what it needs to do and I can actually track the events as they happen somewhere else. Now here's a chance for us to dig in and use the bag of tricks. Now the bag of tricks is on pub and you can use it the same way that you use logging or arms as I showed you before. Uh, unfortunately I have some features that I have yet to publish to pub mostly because they are kind of based on some stuff that's coming in a recent trunk build that hasn't quite been released. So this is a good opportunity to show you how to import packages that actually aren't on pub yet, or maybe a, a version of a package that's not on pub yet, by using git. So if you look at the Megatrix page here on the pub website, you'll see that we're at version 0.13.1, and you can go to the home page. And let's grab that URL and populate that, populate that into pub. So you'll see we've added pub in, and what we can do now is actually go in and say, oops, and it doesn't like copy and paste for some reason. Let's try that. There we go. And so if you want to see the source, this, is, this was actually pointed out by someone in the comments. You actually click on the tab down here and see the source. And you can see the other ones have nothing specified, which basically means go get them out of pub. But for bot, we'll go get it out of git. And let's clean it up just a little bit. Now, regardless of if we got the package via pub or via git, the naming model is the same. So if we want to import a base library from bot, we can do import. And there's one of the base libraries, the base library for the bag of tricks. But it turns out we actually don't want to use the base library, maybe not yet. What we want to do is get the, OI, the IO library that I've defined. And so let's go look to see the method I'm going to grab. So if you expand out bot here in our packages directory, you see there's a whole bunch of libraries to find. And if we open up IO, here's a source code. And of course, I need to document some things still. And this is the method I want to get, enable script log listener. So let's just copy that. We'll see it's the top level method in that library. And let's call this first thing when the app loads. And we'll go back and Let's look at what's in our directory here. We see that we have packages directory, our pub spec YAML and pub spec lock, and what's up. So let's run what's up, and let's pass in my dog's name. So you'll see that we printed out the behavior the same, but if we do another list, we'll notice there's a new file in here, what's up.dart.log. So that single method that I called, the enable script log listener, that does a whole set of work. It figures out what script is running, it wires up to the top level log listener in the logging package, and then it grabs all the log messages that come along and print those out. So if we want to look at if we want to look at those log messages, we can we can just use the bash command more and see the set of things. So we have a timestamp, we have the name of the logger, and we have events that happened. Now here's a cool trick, at least for those that are on a Unix system, so Linux and Mac you can actually use a command called tail. So let's split up our command windows here and actually maybe we'll do top and bottom to uh, make it a little simpler. And let's go into our temp directory, into our demo directory. So if I do tail and do what's up dot log, you'll see that I grab, it looks basically like more. But if we add a command in here, which is dash F or a flag, it means follow. So now that following is set up on this log file, any change to that log file will immediately get echoed to this output. So if I run what's up one more time, you'll see that we get log output. Let's see if we do what's up and we do help. Or if we do 
what's up and do no parameters, you'll see that the log message no name was provided gets called. So thanks again for listening to episode four of the Dart in the Shell series. We got a chance to see some more features of the ARGS library. We got to see features of logging and why logging might be a nice alternative to putting in print statements that we end up deleting anyway. Actually, something I end up doing a lot is if I feel I want to log a lot in an app, I'll just define a private method that's underscore log that takes in a string, and then I'll just call logger. And so basically, every place I would normally type print, I'll just type underscore log and pass in those parameters. And it ends up being a really nice way to make sure that I'm recording lots of things and I don't necessarily have to go clean it up afterwards. You want to be careful about what you log and the format of your logging because now in some respects this becomes a public part of your application and especially if you have a library that you need other people to reuse because you realize if you're actually putting items into the log that they might have apps or services that are listening to that log. So if you have reusable code, make sure that if you're putting info in the log, you're careful about what you put in, how you name it, how you name your logger, and those things. And then we saw how to use tail, specifically tail with the dash capital F command to actually watch that log, watch a log file or any file that's being changed. Um, and we saw how we imported the bag of tricks and set up the log listener so that we can get an automatic log output from an application that's using logging. Um, next time we'll look at some more features in the bag of tricks, specifically how to enable cool command completion that you're used to with tab. So I think a lot of people are used to using tab in a shell to compete to complete a file and directory names. If you're using git or homebrew, you might notice if you have things set up correctly that you can actually create um, completion services that will complete arguments to commands. And I'll show you how to do that with your application and the bag of tricks. See you next time.